And Emmeline, I know you are lurking there. <laughs> Hi, Emmeline. <laughs> Hi there. Really nice to see you again, uh, even though not this time physically in, in Helsinki. And uh, I think that it's going to be an interesting thing coming from Dremek's uh, presentation to yours, uh, because we kind of heard the, the core things of, of monetizing APIs and revenues. And I think that you have some, some further uh, things to say about that with go to market with APIs. So take it away, Emmeline. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mariuka. Hello, everyone. I'm so thrilled. This is my second time having the honor to speak at API Days um, virtually here in Helsinki. And I'm very excited to share with you a very specific model of what it looks like to work with an API economy, per se. So my name is Emmeline Wong and I'm the global category lead at AWS Marketplace. So specifically, what does that mean? So it means that I'm working very hard to make sure that the selection of third-party software companies are available on the digital shelf. So think of AWS Marketplace as a digital shelf, and it's gotta have the right selection. And so what's very exciting is many of you speaking here as well as the sponsors for this conference are actually available on AWS Marketplace today along the journey that, um, that customers want to be able to either try or discover or purchase um, your products at scale. And so one thing that's very exciting is I oversee full lifecycle API management integration, or as the analysts like to call it, integration platform as a service or IPaaS, and low and no code. So what does that mean? It means that it's a spectrum, right? We have developers and enterprise architects that work with code and IDEs all the way through to needing to do the integration and then meeting with end users who may not be technical who want to be able to contribute to modern application development. I'm also certified in the API ops methodology. So throughout this presentation, you'll see me specifically applying this methodology. And so today we're gonna to cover choice, governance, speed, visibility, attribution, adoption of both APIs and API driven platforms, as well as how do you show that you're connecting people to products and in ways that really delight them. So let's look at the 100,000 foot view. I'm showing about 19 services here on the screen. And if you will, AWS Marketplace is one of them. Right. So as companies are, for example, migrating workloads to the cloud, most likely you'll need to be able to find tools that help you, specifically third party tools that are built on AWS, for example. And as many of you has have heard, um, Amazon, we have leadership principles. So there's 14 of them, but specifically customer obsession, invent and simplify and bias for action. So we set up small teams, we design scope, and we go. And we do this at speed, right? Speed is very important as we've seen over the past couple of years where that's the determining factor. Um, and so today with AWS Marketplace, you're able to not only sell on AWS Marketplace, say you're a developer or an organization or a company that's developed an API or a product or a platform, and and on this, in the same vein, customers can, can purchase those products. And then the ecosystem also includes solution providers, um, system integrators and consulting partners, and global system integrators as well. Have you ever used an API or platform and thought, gee, you know, I'd really love for my team or company to use this. I'm curious, how did it go? Were you able to get your company or business unit or even team to adopt it? You know, who did you talk to? Did you happen to talk to someone who manages procurement or purchasing at your company? And then what happened when you did the security vetting? And flip it on the other side. Say you're an API or platform provider and you basically are trying to find, you know, fantastic 
people to adopt your products and your APIs. However, you're kind of having trouble showing exactly, you know, how the people and the organizations, the B2C and the, and the B2B connect. So for example, say you have 6 million users and you've been acquiring them for many years, right? You're designing a product that delights them. Are they paying customers, right? How many are? Um, some are, but say, okay, you know, we want to offer them better support. So let's chat about this. So today, when you're going to your favorite e-commerce store or maybe getting some food from your favorite uh, local restaurant, um, you want to be able to pay, right, in the way that, um, that you like to. So maybe it's with Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, or your credit card, or maybe even cash, right? Um, and so the reason I'm mentioning this is there are purchasing patterns and the API ops methodology helps us to understand as providers that you start with, okay, what is the consumer looking for? So we're going to go on this journey where it's likely going to be new or, or possibly it's not new for you. However, it's a different way of looking at it instead of saying, okay, I know I need to build an API or a chat bot or platform, it's starting with really what it is you're trying to do. And so that's why I mentioned that today as consumers, you have choice in how you pay for it. But as you're maybe you start a company or your company has acquired another company, you grow. The procurement process then becomes possibly arduous, a lot longer. And so what happens is you wanna be able to offer choice, whether it's to a person or to a company. However, what's really tricky is when you're using your credit card to sign up for an app or a website or a tool that you think will help make you more productive, what's tough is, you know, what are some of the drawbacks of that, right? So we have speed to be able to purchase something. So shadow IT is actually the drawback for, you know, just being able to swipe your credit card, right, or to push a button. Because, for example, from a business standpoint, it's really difficult to support, right? And to understand, well, how many people across the organization actually have this tool, right? Maybe a thousand people in our company actually use it. Could we negotiate a better deal? And it's also an interesting thing on the provider side for people to think about, well, how do we know if this company has adopted our product when we know that many of these users have adopted the product? The other piece that's really important is governance, right? So I talked a little bit about um, how there's, you know, you may have many people using a product. Um, and from the procurement side, it's all about vendor management. So many of the um, procurement studies are currently showing is that companies can have, you know, a thousand, maybe 10,000 vendors that they're trying to manage, right? And especially with people coming and going from companies, you want to make sure that the company's IP is secure. And so the AWS marketplace, actually, there's both the shared security model, as well as um, we continuously scan all of the software that's in um, the marketplace. And so it's so much easier, both as an individual, as a company to see uh, what you've purchased, right? And why do we need to purchase more software apps? So the whole idea is you wanna be able to innovate rapidly, right? So, so here's an innovation flywheel. And basically what you're doing is you're trying things like you would in a hackathon. And usually when I'm in on a hackathon team, I notice that we're using on average 15 to 30 different tools sometimes during the hackathon. And you know we're basically trying ideas, right? We're trying to see what works. And, um, and so, especially in a hackathon, we know we have a deadline. And then in a product sprint, right? Maybe we want to do a spike just to understand if this tool is gonna help us better deliver this API, for example. So how many of you have heard of this 550500 model? So the whole idea is that today, you know, many companies have kind of the mega five software vendors, right? And so IT spend is mostly there. But then what's happening is, so AWS Marketplace currently has 50 categories, right? So there's, you know, security, DevOps, 
um, databases, networking infrastructure, IoT, et cetera. Um, most likely, as a, a product leader, as an IT leader, as an enterprise architect, even developers, you're looking for a tool that's really going to help you to make a difference, right, within your company. Sometimes it's just maybe automating something so that you can work smarter. And so that's where the AWS Marketplace comes in. And today you can see that all of the public listings that are there and search that way. And I was really just going to hone in on the fact that um, you know, each user is truly a unique person. And what's really important is that we understand exactly, you know, who our users are. Of course, you know, within reason, obviously there's GDPR and, um, you know, the, the privacy of customer data. And so that's why I wanted to show you that if you take that same triangle that I showed and you invert it on its head, this actually helps us to understand the user. So that same end user or developer that's using your software is most likely the talent or the employee at the company that is your customer or partner. And what's really exciting is that same developer and employee may be working for some of the top companies and organizations that likely you want to work with or that you're working with today. And so this model is very important. The other thing I was going to mention is with the ABS Marketplace being a platform that's a collection of APIs, what's really important is that you unlock or enroll in every feature in the AWS Marketplace. Today, right, if you're a seller, um, there's enterprise and standard contracts. There's a whole list of uh, ways that makes basically procurement happen faster both for you as a, a customer and also as um, the organization that's, that's selling the software. And so what's fantastic is as a company, you're able to offer your software in a way that meets the user's needs, right? There's different pricing options and customers are able to pay only for what they use, as well as if, you know, as a customer, you're ready to commit more, right, annual multi-year contracts, then, then you can save more. And the other thing that's also really nice is existing customers can bring their own licenses, licenses to be able to migrate um, workloads. For example, say you have a, a cloud-first initiative, but you've already pur purchased a license from that ISV. And then the other piece where salespeople are very excited, account executives and business development folks like myself, is private offers. So both consumers and organizations can negotiate a deal directly with the ISV. And so um, what happens is you, you, you have the, pro uh, the public product listing. So you can, for example, check out the Snowflake one or Software AG or Tyke or you know, other companies that are featured at this conference. And you, you can actually develop a private offer directly with, um, with that company. And so this is a direct monetization model, right? So for example, say you do developer relations, you can actually, um, you can actually show exactly how, uh, you know, your event, for example, um, think of AWS Marketplace as a call to action. And you can basically get uh, reports from how you're reaching users and organizations um, as a seller. And so I'll kind of show you what that looks like here. Um, this is a demo that is on the public facing website where you go to AWS Marketplace. So I'm super excited. I've been working with the uh, CEO of Tej Lab and they today have an API discovery and lifecycle management platform. And say I'm a developer and I'm not interested in talking to a salesperson. Well, if you know my line of business would like, you can just continue to subscribe um, and just subscribe to you know, the product that way, or you can do a private offer to, to negotiate. Um, SnapLogic is an integration platform as a service and uh, pairs very well with Amazon Redshift. And so today you can see that we've already built in a G2 crowd um, review that's integrated directly in AWS Marketplace. And so that's exciting because you know, many 
people like using this product. And so when you go there, you're able to see both Marketplace and um, G2 crowd reviews. And also TIPCO. TIPCO lists professional services, machine algorithms, um, as well as their Mashery SaaS platform. And so say I'm really interested in purchasing their API management. So what happens when I click continue to subscribe? So I obfuscated obviously me logging into my AWS account, um, uh, uh, my personal one. And what happens is for this one, it's SaaS contracts. And so I can choose whether or not it's going to renew. And then you can see that, you know, say I'm a you know organization wanting to purchase it. Um, this one is built out by um, the, the amount of API traffic. And then of course I can review the, uh, the EULA, which can also, you know, TIPCO could choose to upload their own. So let's look at a few more examples. So earlier we, we heard our friends at Software AG talk about right, a Google or an Amazon bill. Here's an example of a consolidated bill. So today many of you may receive your you know, AWS bill here, but did you know you can also get your professional services and third party software bill there? And that's exciting. So if you look at Snowflake's product listing, because you know a lot of product managers they don't want to expose um, you know much about their pricing, right? So today you can just see they have one dimension on their public product listing, and with just that they're able to with their marketplace strategy um, get direct monetization, which they were able to you know conduct a Forrester study out of. The other bit is attribution. So if you work with your digital marketer, especially if you're you know, someone in, in DevRel or say you're a thought leader, you can add a UTM code. Um, you can add even uh, you know, an offer, for example, within your public product listing. And just think of the marketplace as a true call to action, right? Where you can go to market with your APIs, your platforms, your applications. And it's a really a way it's, you know, everything that happens is really outside of the platform, right? It's, it's truly a procurement mechanism and it just allows you to be able to sell through an ecosystem and get um, benefits that way. So I know that we covered quite a bit. Um, I hope that you'll connect with me on um, Twitter, the API days, Slack channel, um, Maryuka and I run the um, API Ops chapter here in Dallas, Texas. We're always looking for collaborators and speakers of people who are using the API Ops methodology. And um, for now, I will stop and see if there are any questions. Thank you, Emmeline. And it seems that our audience is either totally taken by your uh, presentation <laughs> or in need of more coffee, or they have snuck out and uh, started <laughs> reading the APEP cycles method or something like that. I love it. But, I hope so. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those would all be almost good reasons to not have any questions. But hey, I think that this was like a really great um, uh, kind of deep dive into how you actually monetize APIs, not like just theoretically yes. uh, monetize them. Because I think that a lot of times the discussion kind of, kind of ends there, that theoretically might, we might want to monetize something, but we don't quite know what um, and how. So uh, how are you, like, are you seeing uh, people starting to do this more and more like uh, I, I know that the marketplace in, in AWS is, is it seems to be growing <laughs> uh, but is there kind of any data uh, in terms of what are the things that prevent people from uh, putting their APIs there or or what are the things that kind of would be helpful to understand or know before you plan the things Absolutely. So because yeah. there are many different product types on Marketplace, right? So people can list their products. Uh, there's several different SaaS product types. There's an Amazon yeah. machine image. Of course, I mentioned they could list their, you know, machine learning algorithms. And so it's really important. Um, so we've got, you know, awesome, right, documentation. 
Um, mm -hmm. However, we have actually teams globally to specifically help companies, you know, even developers to know exactly how to list their products. For example, just because, um, you, so for example, today you can't have like a, a zero dollar listing, right? And so we mm -hmm. basically, it's good to, to work backwards and say, okay, well, how are you, how are customers using your product today? Right. Yeah. So is it running, you know, in a virtual private cloud or, you know, do they, do you normally just send them to your SaaS URL, right? And they sign up. And so mm -hmm. depending on how you sell your product today, that's a great place to start our marketplace, right? So like I mentioned with Tej Lab, um, they wanted to off, they actually, so SaaS has 24 dimensions. And so because they were saying, oh, well today, you know, the way we sell it is, you know, it could be API traffic, it could be users, um, it could be mm -hmm. many factors. And so yeah. it's really important, you know, to talk to someone and put on your product management hat to offer the product on the marketplace in a way where, okay, for example, do you want people to self-service, for example, just click on it, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, say you're a really small company and you don't have the bandwidth, right, to maybe do sales. Yeah. But on the flip side, say you're a company where you only do sales. For example, microservices is one of the, as you know, Margiuka, toughest mm -hmm. um, architectures, especially when it comes to hybrid integration. Yeah. So that's where, okay, maybe you want to offer a cloud formation template, right? So for example, Type Technologies does that. They have some amazing cloud formation templates that you know people can just spin up. Uh, and I, I so, think that yeah. that onboarding is is like su super important because a lot of like there is data from Finland for example that where we seem to have some special problems is the automated provisioning of SaaS products for example that everybody is kind of uh, wanting to sell their SaaS software but not really knowing how to make it really easy for the customers to buy it. And, and with APIs, you don't necessarily have to sell the APIs as APIs, but you, you just need to figure out wh where the value actually is. But we have some questions here. Oh, so, that's awesome. Um, so we have a question. Do you plan to create a catalog of external services and with Open Portal dev Developer API? That is the first question. Sure. So today, the AWS Marketplace is a is an open or public catalog. So mm -hmm. anyone can go there and either, you know, list their software or purchase, um, pending of course that, you know, the documentation has specific criteria. Um, and then the other question, um, I'm not quite sure I understand, but I'm definitely happy to follow up um, offline. Yeah. And, and then there's also a question about the marketplace. Does it allow to choose deployment regions for, for say, SaaS products? That's a very particular question. And I don't know. If sure. Have, uh, yes, yeah. yes. So it depends on um, if they're asking the question as a customer or as a seller or provider. Um, and the short answer is um, there's a feature, and we're always launching new features, where there's geotargeting. Um, and then I was also going to mention the AWS Marketplace is a day one service, meaning it's, it's especially good for companies where you're trying to be more globalized. And so it's available in, you know, all regions per se, uh, you know, from day one. And then, of course, for, as a seller, you can use geotargeting if you if you need to. And there's also um, the geofencing capability. Exactly. So basically that concludes the questions there was just one about your uh contact did de and details so i posted again uh your twitter handle and and your linkedin profile i'm sure thank that you, you can read through those and so thank you emmeline again for the uh wonderful talk and hey let's meet with emmeline and everybody else here in apos meetups or some uh, like next api days conference Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Mariuka.